Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to start chapter 2 and we're going to look at section 2.1 which deals with quadratic functions and models. Back in section 1.6 we looked at these basic functions right here. Uh, f of x equals ax plus b and if you remember this was a linear function, this is a constant function, and this is our squaring function. Um, now in, in chapter 2 we're going to start looking at polynomial functions and quadratics and so on. So first of all let's look at the definition of a polynomial function. Now your book gives this huge definition here where it says let n be a non-negative number okay and you're going to be given something that looks like this equation right here. Now that equation looks really complex but if you read it it says I have a to some term n plus n minus 1, so if I have n minus 1 that's going to be a term less than the previous one, all the way down to a, a sub 2 plus a sub 1 plus a sub 0, or we're going, our terms are going in descending order. So if these are real numbers, then we have a function given by a sub n x to the nth plus a lower term which would be a sub n minus 1 times x to the n minus 1. So if you think about this, if this was like a cubed, then this would be a squared, and we're going to continue on down the line. Um, and then this a sub 0 doesn't have a variable, so this would be our constant. So if we have something that looks like this right here, this is what we call a polynomial function of x with degree n. And if you remember, the degree of a polynomial is given by the largest power on an, uh, for an exponent. Now, a certain type of polynomial function is a quadratic function. Now, a quadratic function is in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. And hopefully you remember that the graph of a quadratic function is u-shaped, and we call that u-shaped graph a parabola. The symmetry of a parabola is with respect to the axis of symmetry. And the axis of symmetry, if we just kind of sketch this up here, like this is our quadrant system. Um, now for y equals x squared, okay, your parabola is going to be centered at 0, 0. So your axis of symmetry then would just be the vertical axis or the y-axis. Now if you shifted your polynomial over here, and let's say that your axis of symmetry now is at, we'll just say that's x equals 3, your axis of symmetry then is that x equals 3 line now. Uh, let's see, the next thing we have to look at is the vertex. Remember the vertex is the minimum or maximum point of your function. If you have a leading coefficient, in other words, if this a value here, the number in front of your x squared value, is positive, then you are going to have the u-shaped graph. If it's negative, then you're going to have the upside-down u-shaped graph. And on a side note, anytime you have to graph um, or know what the shape of a function of a quadratic function looks like, um, what I would like you to do is I would like you to compare your f of x equals x squared function, and we'll write this down here. So f of x equals x squared to whatever function you're trying to graph to kind of see what the main differences are. Uh, so if you have a calculator handy right now, I would like you to compare the graphs of f of x equals x squared and we'll say g of x equals one-third x squared. So if you graph those, let's say you're given g of x here, okay, it wants to know how is this different than your original function, and let's say you can't remember if you have vertical stretches, shrinks, horizontal stretches, shrinks, shifts, lefts, right, up, down, whatever, the, the first thing you should do is you should at least graph your basic function or the parent function and compare it to whatever function you're given. So in this case here, because I have this one-third, this one-third is going to affect the width and it's going to make it broader than your x squared function. And like I said, you can test that out on your own calculator. Another form that is sometimes useful when we're dealing with quadratic functions is called the standard form of a quadratic function. Now the standard form of a quadratic function looks something like this. It says a times the quantity of x minus h squared plus k. Now your vertex is going to come from this h value and this k value. And your axis of symmetry 
is going to come from x equals whatever number you have in here. So let's go ahead and look at an example that deals with this. Example 1 says to sketch f of x equals 2x squared plus 8x plus 7 and then we want to identify the vertex and the axis. Now as this function currently stands f of x equals 2x squared plus 8x plus 7. I can't write it in the standard form because in the standard form we had f of x, and I'm going to write this up here at the top, equals a times the quantity of x minus h squared plus k. Now, I, I, there's nothing I can see that I can multiply by itself to get my x minus h squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and complete the square first. So the first thing we want to do in completing the square is we want to get rid of any constants. So I'm going to move this 7 over to the other side. So now I have negative 7 equals 2x squared plus 8x. I can't complete a square with a coefficient, so I need to factor that out. So we have negative 7 equals 2 times x squared plus 4x. And now I can complete the square on this piece right here. So to do that, we have negative 7 is equal to 2 times x squared plus 4x plus, and I'm going to have to come up with something here. Now, to come up with that term that goes right here, we're going to take our middle term right here. So I have 4, I'm going to divide it in half, and then I'm going to square it. Well, 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 2 squared, so this whole thing here is really going to be adding 4. Now, I am technically adding 4 inside of the parentheses here, but it's being multiplied by 2. So 2 times this 4 is 8. So I am technically adding 8 to this side here, or the right side. So if I'm adding 8 to the right side, I must also add 8 to the left side. So I really end up with 8 minus 7 equals 2 times a quantity of x squared plus 4x plus 4. Now if I simplify everything, I end up with 1 equals 2 times a quantity of x plus 2 all squared. And now I can go ahead and simplify that and put it in that standard form. So I end up with f of x equals 2 times the quantity of x plus 2 all squared. I do want to get rid of this one right here, so I'm going to subtract that. So now I have minus 1. So what that tells me then is that my vertex is going to equal its in the original function, this was a my x minus 2 in here, but now I have an x plus 2, so that tells me that my h value is negative, so I really have a negative 2. And in my original function, this was a plus k, and because it's a subtraction, that tells me I have a negative 1 there as well. So I have a vertex at negative 2, negative 1, and I have an axis of symmetry at x equals a negative one. So if I come and I graph this, and you can see here that this is my x-axis, this is my y-axis. So when I graph this, I have a vertex at negative two, negative one. My axis of symmetry is going to be right through here. And we'll end up with something that looks kind of like this. For a parabola. It is upward, um, or it is a U shape, not an upside down U, because I have a positive 2, oops, right here. And that concludes example 1. So for example 2, um, we want to sketch the function, uh, which is a quadratic function, and identify the vertex and x intercepts. So to do that, again, I'm going to try to complete the square here. 
And before I do that, I'm going to take and put my constant, or the negative 8, over on the other side. So we end up with a negative x squared plus 6x equals 8. Now I'm going to, because I don't have a, a coefficient of 1 on my x squared, I am going to factor out a negative. So that's going to give us x squared minus 6x. I'm going to leave a space so I can complete the square, and then it's equals 8 plus whatever I come up with in this blank here. So now half of 6 is going to give me 3, and I'm going to square that. So I'm really adding 9 inside, but because of that negative, I'm going to be subtracting 9. So I'm going to write minus 9 over here. And when I simplify, I now have a negative on the outside, and I have x minus 3, the quantity squared, equals a negative 1. So if I rewrite this in standard form, we have f of x equals a negative x minus 3, the quantity squared, plus 1. It tells me that I have a vertex at a negative, or I'm sorry, positive 3, 1. I have an axis of symmetry that's equal to, or is the same thing as x equals 1. And then it asks me to find my x-intercepts, which are really the zeros. And the zeros are going to come from my original function. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor a negative out. So here I still have x squared minus 6x plus 8. And if I factor that, that's going to give me a negative x minus 4 times x minus 2. So if I take each one of these factors and set them equal to 0, we'll see that we have x equals 4 from this factor and x equals 2 from that factor. So x equals 2 and 4. So now if I go and I graph all of this, we have a vertex at 3, 1, right here. We have an axis of symmetry at, and I apologize, this shouldn't be x equals 1, this is x equals 3 down here. So your axis of symmetry goes through here, which is x equals 3. You have an x-intercept at 2. 0 and 4 0 which is right here. Uh, now just to confirm I have a negative in front of a negative coefficient in front of x squared so that does tell me my parabola is going to open downwards so now if I go ahead and plot these points we'll see that that does confirm with what we would have anticipated. So this wraps up example 2. Now example 3 is slightly different in that it wants us to write the standard form of an equation for a parabola given the vertex and that it passes through the point 0, 0. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the notation f of x equals a times the quantity of x minus h squared plus k, and we're going to plug in everything that we know. So to start out with, if I have a vertex at 1, 2, I know that h then is 1 and k is 2, so this tells me that f of x is equal to a times x minus 1, the quantity squared, plus 2. Now I don't know what x is, I don't know what a is, and I don't know what f of x is. But I'm given the coordinate point right here, 0, 0, so I can solve for one of those. Now 0, 0 is really my x and y, so I know that y is really the same thing as f of x, or that 0 is equal to a times 0 minus 1, the quantity squared, plus 2. And if I simplify that, I'm going to subtract 2, so I get negative 2 equals, now 0 minus 1 right in here is a negative 1, but I'm going to square that, so that gives me a positive 1 times a. So now I know that a is equal to a negative 2. So with that piece of information, I can rewrite my equation to say that f of x is equal to a negative 2 times a quantity of x minus 1 squared 
plus 2. And that is the equation of the parabola that has a vertex at 1, 2, and that also goes through the origin. And the last thing we're going to look at today deals with the maximum and minimum. Now, if you have a vertex of a parabola, we kind of talked about this already, the vertex is going to be the maximum or minimum point. And you're going to find the vertex of a parabola by this right here. Now, you may not realize that, but if you take the opposite of b and divide it by your 2a, so opposite of this value right here and divide it by 2 times this value, that's going to give you your x-coordinate. And then to find your y-coordinate, you're going to take that number that you calculate from doing the opposite of b over 2a and plugging it back into this function. And that's why you get, that's what the notation f of the opposite of b over 2a means. So if your a value is a number that is greater than 0, aka a positive number, then you have a minimum point at x equals the opposite of b over 2a. If this a value is less than 0, then your parabola is going to have a maximum point at x equals b divided by 2a. We'll drop the opposites because they're going to cancel out. So example 4 is going to deal with just that. It says a baseball is hit at a point 3 feet above the ground with a velocity of 100 feet per second at a 45 degree angle. The equation of this ball is given to you by f of x equals a negative point zero zero three two x squared plus x plus 3. We want to know what is the maximum height the ball will reach. Well the maximum height is coming from your the vertex of your parabola because if a ball is being thrown let's say you have some guy right here throwing this ball this ball is going to go up and come back down okay so it's an upside down shaped parabola which we see right here with this negative coefficient and what we're really looking for is the maximum height which is right here or the top of the parabola which would be the vertex so to find that we have x equals the opposite of b divided by 2a so if I take and I plug in the opposite of b, I end up with a negative 1 divided by 2 times my a value, which is a negative 0 0.0032. And if I simplify that, on my calculator, I got that it was approximately equal to 156.25. So that is the maximum, or that is the time that it will take for the ball to reach the maximum height. Now I have to find the maximum height. And I'm going to do that by plugging in f of 156.25. So really I end up with a negative 0 0.0032 times 156.25 squared plus 156.25 plus 3. So when you simplify all of that, you should get something around 81.125 feet, or 81 and 1 eighth of a foot is the maximum height the ball will reach. If you have questions on this, please let me know. Otherwise, your fun fact for today is a picture that I tend to find funny every time I read it. So on that note, I hope you guys have a good night, and I will see you in class tomorrow. Thanks, and have a good day.